Hi, I'm Jennifer Buying, and on this episode of Cafe New Guinea, we taste the delicious foods of Milan Bay Province. We visit the busy and bright Alatau markets and head out to Normanby Islands to have a look at their yam gardens. We then taste the bountiful and diverse foods of Sibonai and Lilihi village. Milan Bay is a beautiful province of Papua New Guinea where the thick lush rainforest flows into turquoise waters overflowing with biological diversity. We land at Gurney Airport and I can feel the thick warm breeze of Alatau scented by the surrounding vegetation. I am picked up by the friendly staff of Napatana Lodge and taken into Alatau. I can't wait to explore the unique and vibrant food of Milan Bay. Alatau Town is a bustling hub of activity. Alatau is where the people of Milan Bay Province travel to sell fresh seafood, fruits and vegetables at the Alatau Market before heading home with their supplies. So we're here in the Alatau Market and we're going to go and get ourselves some nice wholesome breakfast. Okay, we're going to start off with some carbohydrates. Let's see, I think there's some tapioca over here. Thank you very much. Okay, and two of the breadfruit here. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, breadfruit, cooked in coconut cream that we're putting in here with tulip. I noticed that there's some sago over the other side, some roasted sago, so I want to get that. That's very wholesome, very filling, and it's going to give me a lot of energy all day long. Let's go and get some. That's what I love about the markets here in Papua New Guinea. You can always find some freshly cooked food that's wholesome and healthy for you. Over here you can see some sago and it's still warm inside. It's a little bit like hot bread, fresh hot bread. It's just delicious. So here we have some local chestnuts. Can I always find chestnuts at the market when I come to Alatau? Yes, of course. You can always find them in the market. How often does the tree produce? All right, well, looks delicious. I'm going to try some. Could I please get four kina worth of the chestnut? Wow, look at that. Look at all that beautiful cream in the top there. <laughs> and all that tulip, that's the tulip green that you can see in there. Okay. Wow, look at how absolutely filled this plastic bag is full of food. It's enough to feed a whole family and I've hardly spent any money. <laughs> now that we've got our carbohydrate, let's go and have a look around now for some protein. And because we're in Alatau, I know there's gonna be a lot of different seafood. <laughs> So here we have some fresh fish that's been cooked up. Now I can tell that I'm able to eat this fish because it's been roasted and you can see the golden brown coloration to the outside. Uh, excuse me, can you tell me what the local name is for this fish? Moladin. Moladin, is it? Yeah. It doesn't have many bones in it. Yeah, yeah, not at all. Yeah. Okay, so I think to go for a fish that doesn't have very many bones is a good idea. So I'm going to get some of this. Oh, I am good plan, I am good plan. I like a meat fish. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so over here we've got some delicious smoked fish cooked up in coconut cream with a wide range of different prices that'll suit any budget. So here we have different smoked fish, smoked and dried fish. Now this is your essential source of omega-3s, very very good for brain development. At Napatana Lodge I sit down to enjoy the market food as my local breakfast. So here we have this delicious breakfast that we got from the market today. We've got the grated tapioca cooked in coconut cream. We have the sago bread, fish, breadfruit cooked in coconut cream again, and the local chestnuts. Now let's try some sago. It's quite tough, 
but I can really taste the coconut. Grated coconut mixed up with the sago and roasted in the fire. It's just delicious and so wholesome. Now let's try some of this delicious looking tapioca. Mmm. It's soft and creamy at the same time. It's also got a slightly salty taste to it. Now this beats toasted bread any day. Now let's try some of this amazing looking chestnut. Mmm. It's actually crunchy. It's firm and it's got a very subtle nutty flavour to it. Just delicious. Now let's try some of this breadfruit and see if it tastes anything like bread. It's easy to break. Very soft in texture. It's fresh and tastes slightly nutty. Nothing like bread. So let's try some of this fish here. We've got smoked reef fish, cooked in coconut cream and roasted fish as well. The reef fish. Mmm. This has got a very strong flavour to it. Mmm. And I can really taste that smokiness. And it's slightly oily as well with all that coconut cream cooked into the flesh. Now let's try the roasted fish. It tastes a little bit more like tuna. They're both just delicious. Now this is the kind of food and breakfast that you can eat and it'll keep you going all day long. Why not start your day off like this? We travel to Lilihi village, just a few minutes out of Alatau. Thank you for letting us come to your house and to us how to do your cooking here. You're welcome. <laughs> so we're here in Lilihi village with Dinah and Nolan who will be demonstrating some clay pot cooking and the dish called sipeni. Dinah, the head chef of Napatana Lodge, is dressed beautifully in her traditional bilas. She shows us how to cook Milan Bay style. Dinah peels green bananas and cuts the pumpkin using a mother of pearl shell. She peels the pit pit. Local Lilihi resident Margaret shows us what kind of tulip green we will be cooking with today. This is tulip greens. Um, this, is a, this is a general one which is best and good for eating. The other type is bitter and it's not good for good for cooking or good for eating. Okay. So the really great thing about tulip is that it's really high in minerals and it's actually got protein in it as well. So you can eat a lot of this to get your minerals and some of your protein too. Dinah tears up the tulip into small pieces and adds them to the clay pot. Pit pit asparagus is broken up and sprinkled in. She cuts fresh tomatoes and more tulip leaves are added with sweet potato pieces. Ginger, shallots and pumpkin. The last layer of tulip and chopped spring onions are placed on top. The tomato pith, salt and more coconut cream is added. Coconut cream strengthens the immune system and has natural antibacterial properties to keep the body healthy. The pot is then sealed with the banana leaf. Dinah adds fresh coconut cream to the cooked dish. Coconut also reduces high blood pressure 
and the risk of heart disease. Once all the ingredients are ready, the food is removed from the pot and placed on a banana leaf tray ready to be served. This is sipeni. Taro leaves are ripped up into small pieces and placed on seared banana leaves. Diced tomatoes are sprinkled and mixed in amongst the taro leaves. Coconut milk is squeezed into the dish and everything is wrapped up into a parcel. Lastly, Nolan ties up the sepenny with banana leaf stems. I speak to Nolan about the importance of sepenny to her culture and community. We used to call it our protein, mean like fish or what. So every time we used to go into the garden or go to any other places, but we still going to like, we'll think of sepenny and come there. Like any time we'll come out from the garden, we still going to cook that one or what, wrap it and burn it and then eat it. Visitors, when visitors are coming or like special occasions, we used to like prepare them sipeni. Like many of them, they used to come and taste it, it's like different. Some of them, they used to say, hey, we can't go back to our place. Mm -hmm. This one is like sipeni is fooling us to stay mm -hmm. back. Must be delicious, I'm really looking mm. forward. <laughs> Coconut husks are burnt down to coals and the sepenny slowly cooks on the fire for 30 minutes. Once opened, the banana leaves reveal moist sepenny ready for tasting. So I'm here with Edna, Margaret's daughter, and she's going to tell me a little bit about this fish smoking. So Edna, how long does it take to smoke a fish like this? Well, it takes about 30, 30 minutes or half an hour to smoke the fish. It depends on the heat that is coming out from the fire. If it's very low, then it is less than 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's high like this, it will take uh, about 40 minutes for the fish to be smoked. Um, do you usually put a bit of salt or anything else on it before you smoke it? No, we don't really add anything. Uh, we make sure that it's clean and we don't add salt, we don't add oil okay. and that's that. That's what I love about the fish that's smoked in the coastal communities. It's done so naturally, without any additives, no salt or anything. Just delicious and 100% natural. Our friend Edna is preparing her own special fish dish with coconut cream, shallots and ginger. So now we've got this delicious banquet set out before us here. We've got this wonderful clay pot cooking, the beautiful steamed fish with shallots and ginger, and then we've got the famous sipeni. So in Papua New Guinea, there's different ways of cooking with clay pots. Now in Milan Bay, you can see that there is a wide array of different types of foods that have been cooked in the one pot. So I'm gonna try some of this um, taro konko. Mmm. Oh, this is so delicious. It just melts in your mouth. It's been cooked in the clay pot under that beautiful heat. So everything is just really, really finely cooked. So let's try some of this sepenny. Now we've been told that the sepenny is uh, used as a substitute for meat. So let's see if it really lives up to its name. Wow. Let's look at this. See how it's delicious and crunchy on the side here? I'm gonna try this bit here. It's a bit hot. <laughs> Mmm. Oh, this is better than pig that's been cooked in the moo. <laughs> oh, it's just delicious. And it's slightly spicy too from the, uh, from the taro leaf. This is really, really a beautiful dish. Now let's try some of this delicious looking fish. Wow. It's, oh, I can see, already see all the delicious oil in there from the, the coconut cream. Mmm. Oh, that's just so delicious there with the ginger and the shallot. And the fish is really, really tender. And that coconut cream has made it really rich and buttery. Just beautiful. 
Wow. So have a look at this delicious soup that's been infused with a green coloration from the tulip. This is really, really high in minerals and it's got all that beautiful coconut cream in there. Now let's have a taste. Mmm, this is so deliciously creamy and it's not thick at all. I can really taste the ginger that's been infused in there and that tulip as well. It's just delicious and so wholesome. Next, we travel along the East Cape Highway and enjoy the incredible scenery along the drive. I wonder what the people and food culture at Normanby Island will be like. East Cape Point is where people coming from Normanby and Ferguson Island travel to the mainland. This is where we will meet the owner of Sibonai Guesthouse, Waiyaki Nemani. I love transport on the local dinghies, as it is a fast way to get around coastal areas and gives good economic support to the locals. It takes two hours to travel to Sibonai village from East Cape. Sibonai is tucked away in Sewa Bay and is surrounded by thick rainforest. We arrive at Sibonai and it is dusk. I can hear the insects calling, announcing the setting of the sun. As usual, the locals greet us with welcoming smiles. Hello. Jennifer. Nice to meet you, Bamzi. Hello, baby. Have a nice. Jennifer. Hi, Hi, Hello. Oh, what a beautiful name. <laughs> Early the next morning, the children have begun their day by swimming and playing in their forest stream. Waiyaki's sister is preparing the meal for us. Sugarcane leaves are placed in the base of the clay pot so that the food cooked will not be burnt. The sugarcane leaves are placed in the clay pot first. The women peel the purple yam and Singapore taro. They also remove the skins of bananas for cooking. The yams and taro are peeled and placed in the basket before going into the clay pot. A diverse range of starchy foods are being prepared and steamed with local ginger leaves. Cooking is always a family affair in PNG. Everyone has a task to perform, whether it be cutting firewood, preparing the greens, scraping coconut, or just having fun telling stories. A big fire is created for the yams, pit pit, and taro. The yams and pit pit are being roasted on the fire. A local clamshell is used to scrape the burnt skin off the yam. Roasted food. Eh? People in the morning, they do going out, go hunting or go fishing, and with the family going, let's say the children. Wai Yaki is a great host who is passionate about natural foods. He is a medical missionary and heals people in the community using simple remedies with local herbs and foods. 
he does everything too. In the morning, they do going out, go hunting or go fishing, and with the family going, let's say the children, they have to get the roasted food because it keeps them whole day. They don't get hungry very quickly. And two, in times where there's no food because all the gardening is being done, fishing is being done, the air houses are empty, the families don't stay around the village because there's, there's nothing to eat. And they go out in the bush, from, they feed from the wild yams, anything they find from the bush, but it's gonna be roasted. They will not cook because if they cook, the food is gonna be not plenty, so normally they have to roast. They will get hungry very quickly. Okay. So they can eat only one or two and it keeps them all day. The vegetables continue steaming over the fire. Wayaki explains how eating steamed vegetables and herbs helps boost people's health and energy in his community. Okay, this is a boiled food with no cream and with no protein. The reason why they prepare this is when they are going for work, like cut the garden or clear the garden after the burning. Mm -hmm. When they have protein, they feel lazy, they'll be just lazing around and they will not work whole day. Mm -hmm. So they eat this to keep them awake. Also, when they are sick, they don't eat any creamed food or any protein. Mm -hmm. It's boiled like this and it's all the herbs, they put them together inside and they can just drink. Mm -hmm. So there are fever and medicines, it's a herbs there they can add on mm -hmm. and they boil it together with their food and drink the soup. Mm -hmm. And that's when ginger leaf is added on too. Mm -hmm. And it also keeps them from diabetes. Mm -hmm. Diabetes. Um, when they are sick, they only eat this type. Mm -hmm. No fish, no nothing. And all they have herbs are added in for maybe they cut their leg mm -hmm. or they are feeling headache or just fever. Yes. They would always put their medicine inside and they cook it together with the food and drink the soup okay. and eat the food. They only add their medicines inside their food and eat from it and they are healed. Okay. So this is your typical breakfast here in Sibonai. You have roasted root vegetables with coconut or purely boiled root vegetables and tulip in water. So I'm going to try some of this dagua buyo, which is actually that ginger root vegetable. Mmm, it's crunchy and it doesn't really have a ginger flavour to it at all. It's actually like sweet potato but not as sweet. Some purple yam. Mmm. Mmm. This is really deliciously soft. And it's really absorbed that ginger leaf flavor. This is the taro kong kong. All these vegetables taste so good because they've really absorbed all of that ginger leaf. Mmm. And taro kong kong has got a very full flavor inside your mouth. <laughs> Let's try some of this pure wild ginger flavored soup. Mmm. You can taste all the different flavors of those root vegetables in there. But what really stands out is that beautiful taste of that ginger leaf. It's just delicious. So let's try some of the roasted yam with some coconut. Let's see, here we go. Look at the beautiful color here of this roasted yam. Now I've got some coconut here. So it's basically eaten together like this. Mmm. That mixture of the roasted yam on the outside with the coconut is just delicious. This is such a top breakfast. Thank you. <laughs>